Welcome back, everybody, to the Breakdown Podcast YouTube channel. My name's Corey, and with me once again to break down the finale of Miss Marvel, it's Vic. That's me. What's going on, everybody? Before we get started, we do want to let you know we have a live show we do every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash MillerKing underscore 51. Come by, hang out with us uh, as we talk random things uh, and random shows. We usually have a set set, but for the time being, we're unsure what the next shows are going to be. Well, we do know uh, we have uh, She-Hulk is coming, so we will definitely be covering She-Hulk. Um, yeah. And then after that, I'm not after sure. After that, we're not sure. <laughs> there, there isn't a second show slated for that time slot, but we'll figure something out. We'll figure something out. Uh, if you, if you uh, are unable to make the live shows the episodes are available on Spotify as well as Apple Podcasts. And please, also, while you're here, hit the subscribe button and uh, ring the bell for notifications so you know when we ha we put up a new episode or a new video. And uh, leave us some comments. Let us know what you thought as well. And without further ado, Vic, let's break it down. Episode 6 of Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel. Miss <laughs> Marvel. Miss Marvel. No normal. Uh, no. No. The episode starts out where it kind of left off with Bruno and uh, Cameron running for their lives from Agent Deaver from the DODC who has uh, started a, a freaking citywide lockdown search for uh, the boys. Um, Cameron has just been um, given his powers, so he doesn't quite understand how to use them um, or what he's doing with them. And uh, after the... Uh, the poor Circle Q, R.I.P. Circle Q, got destroyed. Um, they went on the lam, and they're trying to figure out where to go. Um, and <laughs> they head straight for Nakia. <laughs> She's like, what are you doing here? Why would you come here? Because they go to the mosque. And Nakia, for some reason, right. is at the mosque in the middle of the night. But um, she's like, why would you come here? This is the first place they're going to look for you. Like, obviously, you've been hanging out with the Muslims, so they're going to come straight here looking for you. And sure enough, the DODC heads straight for the mosque. Um, and when you they know, get there... You something, know, something uh, I thought of while watching this scene, I was like, okay, she got elected to the board of... Board. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what it is. I can't call it board of directors, but she's only sixteen. I mean, does that even make any sense that a sixteen-year-old? I don't know. I don't know that much about the Muslim culture, but I mean, in general, I'm, I'm sure you can take on roles and responsibilities earlier in life as a female Muslim. I don't know. I don't know if that's a thing, and anyone who may know the answer to that question, but I'm assuming that. It's just a difference in, in things. I mean, as as teenagers, you can be ushers and and different things in a church. It just depends on how involved you want to yeah, be. Yeah, but I'm so, talking about on a on a board. Of, yeah, but you don't know what you, that, know, you don't know how power. that board you don't know how that board works though. So that's I'm, what I, I know. That's what yeah. I'm saying. I mean, but in <clears> general, does it even make any sense that a 16 year old be on the board I don't of, see, of anything? I don't see why not. I mean, if you if you if you if you're going to there, there are like eighteen-year-old mayors in of of cities. Like, if you if you're going to be involved, well, that's, that, that's that city stupidity. But if you're going to be involved and you you have a strong enough platform to do it, and they're eighteen, why so not? You know, it's, it's why, but you don't know that sixteen's not the age of adulthood in the in their culture. Like, yeah, it, it, we just enough. don't know. We just don't know. But fair enough. Anyone who does know, let me know. I'm actually interested but to find out that answer comments. for sure. So let, let us, us know in the know comments. comments if, if that's if that's weird or yeah. at all, or you know, to I'm me, weird. I don't think so. But you okay. never know. Um, so they go to the Kia, and um, obviously the uh, the the sheik and. Uh, the rest of the congregation and they walk in and they're like, we're looking for these two boys. And as soon as they walk in, everybody in the mosque just holds up their, their identification. And they're like, this isn't our first rodeo. We know how this works. And, uh, he's just giving, uh, Deavers a hard time, um, to give the boys a chance to, to hide. And, uh, she's like, tear this place apart, search it. And he starts going off on her about like, just being how she is. And she's like, I don't remember ever hearing that in the Quran. He's like, yeah, it's because uh, Lincoln said it. it <laughs> so he's just like blasting her for not even knowing like as much of her own history as she should. While yeah, she's you know, while she's impeding on their on their their their, their freedoms. So. <laughs> oh, I, I've got something to say about her, but I'm I'm gonna hold off okay. uh, until we get to the part. 
Go ahead. Um, so they 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 tear apart the moss looking for them. They can't find them anywhere, and it's because they have a secret alcove behind two sliding um uh cabinets Shelves. that they can't that they didn't notice um so they he ends up sending them out uh to hide but it, as a disguise he gives them two hats <laughs> because we've seen that so many times in marvel movies right that's that's how you, that's how the the the, the, I, the hats in the mcu are like uh, the glasses, Superman's glasses in DC. That's how this works. So no one's going to notice them. They go on the lamb and they they go for the run. They go on the run. And wait, Nikia maybe tells that's them, why I'm still, wait wait wait. Maybe that's why I'm still single. I'm always wearing a hat. So no no, no one ever knows who you are. <laughs> that might be the that 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 might be. The Damn, reason, I got to work I'm, on I'm that. I'm guessing it's probably not. But that's uh, gotta it be could it. be that you never leave your home. <laughs> that's you don't put yourself true. out there. I mean, if you don't cast the line, you don't reel in the fish. That's just mm. how this works. Which is a weird. Never mind. Um, never. <laughs> it, it contextually it is correct, um, mm. <laughs> but there we go. Uh, so Nakia's like, go to the school. I'll meet you there. And they're like, why the school? There's like, it's a Saturday. Nobody's gonna think to look at the school. Just go. Now keep in mind, there. it's daytime currently. Mm -mm. They get to the school. It was. It was. And evening. it's nighttime. It was evening because the the explosion happened. The explosion happened in the evening and they went straight there but when they left the mosque it was daytime outside because uh, I, they ran they ran into Mus that. they ran into they ran into kamala in the alleyway and it was not it was daytime i didn't notice that i'm gonna have to go, go back, back and look and at it again but i don't remember back. seeing that this is the part in the video you can put that scene show that i'm right i feel like i feel like, like it was a lighting issue not that it was night that it was my nighttime. immediate response was damn how far away was the school that they walked <laughs> all day like that they walked all night I'll because have to... they left the alleyway holding him up and when they got there they were in the same position walking up to the school holding him up and i'm like that must it must have taken them a while to get there she's like okay. oh the uh the the stage has the best lighting in the, in town. So I'm just working on my TikToks or whatever. And I'm like, does there no security in this school? Like there's nobody mm -hmm. like they're just breaking these, these kids are literally breaking laws. <laughs> yeah. And nobody, you know, nobody if, does it. If there's anything I remember about being in high school was if you try to get in after hours, every single door was locked. Yes. Every door. Even though you could, well, yeah, you really couldn't get in the windows either from outside because no. that would obviously be a security issue. All of the windows were like these, like at least in my school, all the windows were like those slot windows that just kind of open a little bit yeah. to let air yeah, flow yeah, yeah. in, but they never actually open open. Right. And I get it. In the cities, these are much older schools. And I mean, especially in New York City, they're older schools. They do usually have standard windows, but still... It's New York City. There's security everywhere. <laughs> like, yeah. there would be cameras and all kinds of stuff all over that not, school. Not to mention the fact, okay, you gave an explanation of why she was there, which still doesn't make any sense. It's like she only does her, her TikToks, and this is why TikTok is bad. <laughs> she only does them at the high school. That well, doesn't make any sense. She's saying but, that the light, because she's, she's in the theater. She was in the theater. And she right. has the lights in the theater that she can oh, control that. and all that fun stuff. So, I, I mean, so I guess. it's like whenever she gets the urge to do a TikTok, she sneaks out of her house and then goes to the school and does it and then comes back. I mean... Doesn't make it, sense. It is what it is, but... Also, you know, but... So, they gave an explanation. Stuff. They gave an explanation for her, but the brother was just like... Uh, the brother how, did you, up, how did he even know? But he, he literally said... He literally said... Mom and Dad sent me to come to, to look after you. And he's there, she's like, I'm a superhero. What are you going to do for me? Uh, but he literally says, he's like, I went to this high school too. I know how to break in here. So he he literally said he broke but, into the school. He knew how to so do it. So he's been following her this whole time? Is Dude, that he's, have you ever noticed every episode that he's in, he's literally wherever she is? That's what he does. He's been doing it the entire season. She's, he's always around. Like, when she was having lunch with camera, he just happened to be outside of the windows and saw her. Saw her. Like, when she was uh, at the, you know, when she was messing around at the outside of the house, he just happened to be there. Like, he's always around. He literally knows where and what she's doing at all times. And also, mm -hmm. at the beginning of the episode, just like with the mom, and they're like, oh, she's like, I have something to tell you. And they're all sitting there, and he's like, she's like, okay, go ahead. 
and he's he's like I, I'm 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 Nightlight, and they're like, oh my gosh, really? What? They know everything that she's doing and everything that she does because the mom tells them everything. So I'm sure they figured out what it is, and more than likely they put one of those iPad tracker things in her outfit <laughs> <laughs> just to make sure. <laughs> I can definitely see that mom. Yeah, we did that. leave that part out. We did leave that part out at the beginning of the episode. She does ex- try to explain. Uh, or tried to say that, and everybody already knows. Yeah. Then her mom gives her the final costume that uh, that that we know from the comics. Yeah, which she actually and... had. I was like, she's gonna go home and make this thing, and I was like, I didn't think about the fact that she's like in uh, Pakistan, and she actually just had it made there. Um, and obviously, again, as the season was, as the episodes were going along, she was collecting pieces of that outfit and the mom just kind of took all of those pieces and put it together into a a solid outfit for her. Um, even though the materials are not, the materials are nothing like what's the the stuff she collected. (laughs) Yeah. So, so while she's at the high, now we, now we go back to the high school. She's already, she's in that outfit. So yeah. Um, so um, they get to the school and they're like, well, what are we going to do now? Because Devers has now surrounded the school. She's got the DODC out there. Um, at this point, people know what's going on and they're, they're kind of following what the DODC is doing. Um, and because Kamala was basically uh, running across the skyline, um, everyone in her community uh, saw her. Like the Euro guy, the Euro vendor saw her running across, which then she like stops at a stoplight and waits for it to turn green before she keeps running. I'm like, you're not impeding traffic. Like, I don't think you yeah, follow you're, that. Uh, you're actually above it. I think the whole literally. idea is like she's trying to, to, to stay lawful, <laughs> even though she's breaking into schools and everything else. But um, so people are, well, are taking notice. I wonder, how she, I wonder how she handles being on a plane then when the plane is above streetlights. Yeah. People we are going to stop. We, <laughs> we got to stop. Stop, stop the plane. It's a stoplight down there. People, people the are starting to fault. take notice of what's going on and they're kind of following what she's doing. Um, so they're paying attention. They get to the school, like you said, and they kind of group up and they're like, all right, we need to like figure out a way to keep the DODC from getting to Cameron. Um, because they're obviously only after him. I'm like, no, they're after you too, baby girl. They want you too. So like, I don't know what you think you're doing. Um, but they, they do the, you know, the smart guy montage where Kamala and, uh, and Bruno go into the science lab and they, they make a concoction, um, and set traps and Kamala goes through her whole, um, like, I thought it was funny because we just watched, um, uh, Thor Love and Thunder and there's that scene where Meek is like writing everything on the board with his little marker knife blade hand thing and uh, I was like he's literally just mapping out the entire movie on that board because like if you watch that board you can see exactly what's going on in the movie on that board and they then this episode comes out and it's the exact same thing she's just drawing out the plans on the board and by the end of it the whole board is just full of everything that they're about to do and how it's supposed to play out which I thought was kind of funny um so they enact their plan, and basically it's to get the DODC inside of the building, confuse them because everyone's wearing the exact same thing. They all have on the school t-shirt. They all have on, you know, uh, the hoodie up and everything. And when they walk in, um, this thing I don't understand, though. So Bruno has his little, like, Alexa machine set up on the staircase to distract them. And then out of nowhere, a disco ball lowers out of the ceiling <laughs> it's a distraction is all it is i get it but what where, where? did they get his dis- where did the disco, disco ball come from and I, I will give you there's a theater department so maybe they had it but how did they rig it up so that it slowly lowered into position like i, I don't That's a, yeah okay so we're gonna go past that it's just it was a silly piece i'm like i can't even i can't even make this makes sense like i will give a lot of latitude to some things but i'm like this makes no sense whatsoever (laughs) yeah and how they were able how they they didn't even have this much time to be able to engineer all this stuff yeah we don't know how long they had but yeah we do (laughs) they uh they come in and they're they're using their stark tech weapons they have like uh stunners and you know how you know they're stunners the the, the uh, sound that it makes when they turn on the guns. Well, there's that, but also uh, in Star Wars, when they use stun mode on their guns, they're these big round blue circles that hit people and knock them out. 
literally the first thing I thought. I was like, dude, they just literally stole Star Wars stunners. But um, they... Well, uh, it's, it's, it's the same noise we hear in Iron Man at, yeah. as well as in Hulk uh, when they had uh, the big machines that they were using the, to uh, yeah, stun Yeah, the, the, stu- stun the sonic guns. Um, mm-hmm. So they start chasing the kids around, um, and because they're all, they're like... They're like they're they all look alike. They all look alike. They're this way. They're that way. They're this way. They're that way. They can't figure out where the, where they are. So they all start chasing it's all the, of Thomas the kids. Crown. Huh? It's like Thomas. It's like uh, Thomas. Is it Thomas Crown affair? Yeah, Thomas, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so they start chasing the kids around. One of them's on a bike riding through the school with a uh, uh, fire extinguisher attached to it, and they're fogging the place up. So they're really disorienting the DLDC people, and they come in. They're shooting at them. They're obviously not trying to kill these kids because they're they're at least using the stunners. Um, and at one point, they go into the chemistry lab, and there is a skeleton with a lab coat and a gigantic knife. Why? Why, why was that knife there? And uh, when yeah, they walk question, in... <laughs> yeah, you got to question where the knife came from. But I will make note uh, that they made the skeleton look like uh, Mother from Psycho. <laughs> which is why it had the knife. Oh, the maybe it was a prop knife from the theater department. Okay. Yeah, well, but it had, to be, it had to be sharp enough to, dude, to the, prop the balloon. Yeah, though. but the tip, of a, the tip of a plastic, uh, you know, play blade, if it's, if it's, you know, if it's mm, pointy fair. enough, it'll do it. Um, so it swings down, hits the balloon, the chemical reaction gets released, and the entire school gets filled with some sort of a foam substance that's strong and and uh, resilient enough and inflatable enough to knock all of these guys off their feet um, as they're running away from them. Uh, they get into the... Uh, I don't know which one was riding the bike, and I don't know where the bike came from. I'm going to assume it was Nakia, and she she rode it there. But she rides through the, the gym, and she like makes a smoke screen, and she heads out, but they end up shooting her tire, um, and she gets knocked off. So they're kind of catching up with them as the, 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 as the more time goes along, and they finally do capture... Um, Everyone except for Cameron and um, uh, Miss Marvel. And Cameron is just like off and on suffering from something. Like they're having to almost carry him at times. Other times he can move on his own. Other times he's like bent over and hunched over again. And I'm like, what is going on with this dude? Like, is he hurt from the explosion? And then as I'm kind of thinking that, like trying to figure out what's going on with him, he actually tells them, he's like, I can't, I can't handle this. I don't know what's going on. Like, it feels like I'm, I'm, I'm exploding from the inside out. And it's because he does not have control of those powers that his mother just kind of dropped on him out of nowhere. And it's, it's literally manifesting in, in, uh, internally in him and he's, he's suffering from it. Um, so unlike Miss Marvel, who, for whatever reason, it didn't cause her any kind of pain, um, he's not handling well, it well. we may find out later why that was the case. Yeah, he's not handling it well. Um, so he goes out, um, they capture, like I said, all of the normies, <laughs> as it mm-hmm. were, um, and he goes out and he's just like, He's mad, obviously, because they're all after him. Devers was actually called off because uh, I don't... What was the other guy's name? I don't remember the um, dude's name, but, but you're right. He calls her off and says, you know what, you're you're doing this to high school kids Cleary. in front of a bunch of people. Yeah. Stop. His name's Cleary. He's like, uh, he's like, I don't know what you think you're doing, but you need to stop. You guys are being... Everyone's seeing this. You have to like call it off stop and she's like yeah that's not gonna happen and that's when she sends everybody in after him and at this point gonna... she's committed to the she's committed to the bit so yeah yeah she 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 goes all you know uh she goes rogue. evil she basically goes rogue. yeah rogue agent so here's my theory okay she's a scroll of course of course mm-hmm. you know scrolls are not bad right this woman is bad some of them are. Well, yeah. Where have you seen a bad scroll yet? Okay, in the comics. All, all you, yes, in the comics. But all you've seen in this incarnation of the scrolls are scrolls who are trying to save their own people and work with humans. Yes, the, those those are separate ones, though. Oh, okay. So this is the, this is the start of the bad scrolls. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, because one of them actually in Captain Marvel was bad. They, they were trying to. They were trying. Th- th- those are the same ones that were fighting her. That were fighting with her later, though. 
Like it's no, it's, there was one that died early because they tried. They they were not good. Right, because they they know they knew the she was Cree, and and because she's Cree, the scrolls hate the Cree. The Cree exactly. literally try to wipe them out. And they and didn't understand did, who or what she was, and once they and, did, then they changed their they changed. And their in team. episode one, no two, I forget when we saw where this bracelet came from. It was on the arm. Of a Cree. Mm-hmm. What are the possibilities that she really is a scroll, and she's trying to get that? She's trying to get that because she knows it's Cree, uh, 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 tech. Uh, tech. I mean, maybe. I'll, 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 I'll allow it. And no, I but... did not get this from a YouTube video. This is all on my. This is I, all on my. I, I, oh, I know, because like, everything, everything up. is Cree or Mephisto with you. I know. Yes. <laughs> I understand, but um, I hadn't even like the, this is the one time I didn't even question that this may have come from uh, you know who. <laughs> you, you feel so guilty that you have to justify. It. No, I'm just waiting. <laughs> I'm just waiting for it to be said. No, I did not. Not even in the slightest did I think that because I know how you are about freaking scrolls and and, uh, and Mephisto. But um, so she's just going off, and she is. Um, uh, literally, when they come out of the building, they switch from you know non-lethal to they switch to lethal from non-lethal, and they're just like trying to kill him. And at this point, I'm going, "Why are you trying to kill him all of a sudden? You've literally been trying to capture him, and now all of a sudden you want to kill him? Like it doesn't make any sense." And on top of that, right in front of everybody in their community, you're gonna try to kill this kid, mm-hmm. and he is just like blocking. He's using his uh. He has what's called bioluminescence. Um, it's does it's it's the same as hers, but it's different. And they made sure that you saw it was different because his is like a golden color, where hers is always like a blue and white color. Um, so he's trying to stop them from shooting him, and he is not in control of it at all. Um, and he starts to get chipped away, and then that's when Kamala jumps in and she uses her force field to her force her light. Uh, her hard light to stop them. Um, what I thought was interesting though, is it's not like it's, it's not invulnerable. Like it's not invincible. Like they're shooting it and it's just chipping pieces of it off. So like, I do like that they gave her a certain amount of vulnerability, even though she has this superpower that can pretty much stop anything. I like that. They actually gave her a, uh, it, it's not all, all powerful. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so she starts to block the, the shots and everything. And then when they realize, oh, this ain't working, they pull out the big gun and they take out the, 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 the truck mounted sound cannon. Um, and they use it against them because they have the technology. <laughs> and they basically and blow her and Cameron up with this thing. Well, at, at one point, she ends up going big. Yeah, they they they, they dig they ding her bell and she's like trying to shake it off and then she's just like, all right, if you guys are gonna play, if you're gonna play rough, I'm gonna play rough. And she she says the word, she embiggens. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know this was a thing. I've I've said it before. I told you that's what it is. I was like, I wanted to fully embiggen. Um, and like I said, well, when no, she, when she makes her hand, was... yeah, when she makes her hand big and she hits people or stops things, it's it's referred to as her being embiggened. Um, and she basically flat out turns it into a thing, and uh, and her... it's kind of hard to see. It's kind of hard to. It's kind of hard to tell that they actually did it. Yeah, uh, because well, it of becomes, the camera angle. It becomes like I a weird a... mech suit on her. I, and... I, I, I have a feeling. I have a feeling it was uh, due to budgetary reasons. Um, why they couldn't really show it, or I... just the fact that the digital effects team couldn't figure out how to make this look legit. So I don't like, know. Let's cut back on that. I think to like to me when I saw it, like she, they played it like she didn't really have full control over what she just did. Because like even when she was like walking, she was just kind of stumbling, like a like almost like a newborn trying to get you know, their, their feet under them when they first start walking. That's how she kind of started out. Like she wasn't quite stable with it. And then as they continued attacking, she kind of started to pick up steam until she got to the point where she was able to just basically like wreck shop on the DODC. Um, and then Cameron like completely loses it. And he just starts like his hard light goes crazy. Um, and he starts to endanger the entire, um, uh, I guess community, the whole group as a whole, um, and 
his his hard light is just like spikes about to kill all the normies that are in the that are in the uh, prison the the paddy wagon um and she jumps in and she encases him and his uh his hard light inside of her hard light and he's like she's like you need to like chill out dude because you're about to like cross a line you can't come back from and if you do that there's nothing we can do to help you and he, she's like right now we we have a way out of this but you got to chill out you just got to and uh, her escape plan is basically to send him back to Karachi to hang out with the Red Daggers. Um, yeah, and and by di- she she calls she calls the dude from the Red Dagger, yeah. who just happens to have somebody already over here that can that can take him back. No, so I mean that it's 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 not that he just happens to. The Red Daggers smuggle people back and forth across all the time. Um, and like he even says, like the the uh, the American government doesn't like me. They're at, they're after me. And in the comic books, he does end up coming to. He ends up going to school there with them. But they travel back and forth. They smuggle like crazy. So like for them to say like he's like get him to the port, and that's what they're saying. He's like get him to the tell him to get to the port, and we'll get him we'll get him out of there. Which means they have a cargo ship that somebody you know he has. There's probably a red dagger on that cargo ship because they are not like. He isn't the Red Dagger. They are the Red Daggers, but they are all Red Daggers. So there are Red Daggers all over the world because they're basically a clandestine hunting um, like the Black Widows, right? Um, so for him to <clears throat> tell him like just go to the go to the port, we'll get you here, um, is completely believable to me at least. So um, so while they're in the dome, she punches a hole in the ground, and that's what he escapes through. Right. Into the I'm sun. not exactly sure how this hole works. What do you mean? Well, he had to get to a port from where he was at, and right. she punched a hole straight into the ground. Right into the sewers. Into the sewers. New York City. New York City is on top of a labyrinth of sewers, so all she had to do was punch a hole in the ground, let him get past like where the uh, where the you know the the quarantine hope... radius is, and then he gets so, then he can get out. So what you're saying is the hole that she randomly punched into the ground just happened to be right into a sewer, dude. Everywhere in New York, like if you if you ever look at a picture of New York City. There are sewer grates and manhole covers every, like, block. Literally, the city is built on top of a network of sewer systems and everything else. It is completely believable that she just popped that in the ground and he was able to get into a sewer. Trust me. Okay. Trust me. You've seen movies. You just see... I know you saw the movie Chud, right? Remember that movie? Yes. I have it right over there. Sewers in New York City. That's exactly what they look like. Like that was filmed in a sewer. Like that's what it is. So that's that's what she did. She got him in the sewer system. He got outside of the quarantine or the what do they call it when they uh, when they like the perimeter. He got outside the perimeter and then he got to the to the uh, to the ship. Obviously, because at the end of the episode, they show him walk into the Chinese food restaurant and uh, Hakim is sitting there waiting for him. Um, which is interesting considering Hakeem is literally a clandestine hunter and he's a clandestine, but I guess this next, their generation is completely different from, you know, the, the crazy ones that were trying to destroy the world. We're going to stop with our previous, our previous, uh, ancestors did. (laughs) Um, so basically how they get out of trouble is, uh, Devers, who was supposed to have stopped this whole thing, calls in the cops to help, like, like make the perimeter. Um, and when all of this goes down and they see that the DODC is literally trying to kill these kids, um, the community turns on them and so do the police. Um, and when the DODC try to go in and get them, they're like, yeah, right. And then the rest of the community is like, I don't think so. And as this is all being, like, brought down, uh, Cleary is like... You're done. Like, I don't know. I told you to stand down and you still went for it. You are done. Don't even like, and then she's like, all right, uh, guys, we got to go. And they just left. <laughs> they just walked out of the group and everything yeah. was fine. Um, so, yeah, we'll see where that plays out. Obviously, it's going to play out somewhere else um, in another show or whatever. And I have a feeling I, I don't think it's going to be a big piece, but I have a feeling that what just happened is going to come up in um, in 
She Hulk. Because basically, She Hulk is a she's a defense attorney for supers. So at some point, they're gonna like use case precedents or something, or like bring up the fact that all of this stuff happened. Because the DLDC is probably gonna go after. We know the DLDC is going is going to go after somebody in there. Um, and when they do, she's probably gonna bring up this whole thing about Devers uh, about Devers and her you know her going rogue. Um, so we'll probably see it again probably there. Um, so. The one of the cooler things is they did use social media to kind of um, pad and protect uh, both Cameron and uh, Miss Marvel because um, they all went on. They all basically went live and they're like, "You see what's going on here?" And they're recording the whole thing. Um, and they're they're like, "Yeah, this is what's happening. She's a good guy. Yeah, yeah. She's trying to save people. This and that." Um, and they go through the whole thing. Uh, we find out that that stupid little kid that she saved is the one that's stealing everybody's shoes. <laughs> Did you notice that? No, I didn't. Yeah, actually. he had he had everybody's shoes in the background of his. Phone. I started <laughs> seeing social media like videos and <laughs> you I zoned, zoned out. I zoned out. I should have known. <laughs> um. Uh. But then, but then she's sitting on, uh, she's sitting on the roof. Of, of her house yeah. and she I think she's getting ready to, to go back out for whatever reason and her dad comes out there and is talking to her and you know and so you know gives gives uh, tells her the origin of her name and what it means well he, tell, he tells her like the like she's really special in the fact that like they were trying to have her over and over again and it wasn't it you know and then they finally did have her um, and then like you said he gives her the origin of her name and tells her like basically it's like you're special, and then it boils down to your your Marvel, and she's like, you know, you're, our, you're own, our, very own, our very own little Miss Marvel. I'm like, oh, that's sweet, and, but it's and very that's where we get the name. Yeah, it's it's sweet, but it's very very convenient. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> which I'm okay with, but um, it, it does show though her and her dad have a really a really special relationship, and I really like the way that they they put them out there. Her mom and her have kind of like a. a a, a tenuous relationship, but you can 100% tell like her mom loves her to death. She respects and loves her mom to death, but her and her dad are, are a team. Like they, they, they are much closer and he gives her, you know, he tells her kind of get encourages her to do what she's doing as opposed to kind of stopping her. Um, but that's how we get her name. And then as everything is winding down, um, old, uh, Bruno comes in and, you know, he's, He's talking to them. Um, he's he's driving Cameron's car. He shows up with Cameron's car. I'm like, if you had access to that car, why did you run through everything instead of just getting in the car and driving off? But I digress. I don't know where the car was. But, um, and how Cameron got it back after he was imprisoned, by the way. Um, but <laughs> he shows up in the car and he's like, hey, uh, I just want to kind of let you guys know, which I thought he had already told them because he put that slipped that note into her locker. Um, he's like, no, yeah, I'm going. I think to... that I think that note was him telling her that he's going to California yeah, to that's that what, school. That's, that's what I was saying. That's why oh. I thought that he had already done that because he slipped that note in there, and I thought that note had, hey, um, I didn't know how to tell you this, but I'm going to uh, to Caltech uh, for a summer program, and um, I was like, you know, they're making this big deal about him going to Caltech. It's literally a summer program. He's going there for like a semester and then coming back. Like he's not done. <laughs> He's not leaving permanently, but I mean, now that his house has been blown up, I mean, what else are you going to do? Um, but he's like, I'm going, he's like, yeah, I'm just going to take Cameron's car. I'm going to drive out there. It'll be nice. And they're like, yeah, I don't think so. If anybody gets Cameron's car, we get it. <laughs> and they give him a hard time for it, which I thought was, a, it was a fun interaction. And then he does the thing. He walks up to Kamali. He's like, you know, your brother, which I thought this was hilarious because you know, her brother was like, you know, she's got powers. I wonder if I have powers. You should see if I have powers. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's a fanboy at this point, but he wants to see since he has the same DNA, if he has powers too. Um, I'm like, you should have just slapped the bracelet on him and see if anything happened. That would have answered your question. But yeah. um, Bruno's like, yeah, I did some testing. I, I checked I checked Amir, and he's completely normal. He doesn't have any powers. He's like, so what I thought you were is not what you are. He's like, you've got a mutation. And as soon as he said that, they were like, doo, 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 doo. I was like, I didn't played. even hear the music. They played the X-Men 97 theme music for like half a second. I was like, oh, hell yes. 
I'm not like I, I'm a little confused, but yes, I'm I'm down with this. It's okay. Um, and basically, the reason why I say that is because the way he says that he says you've got a mutation, and the mutation obviously is the start of the mutant up, uh, you know, surge in the MCU. So instead of being an inhuman or a jinn, which she is, um, her actual powers and why she may have a better um, lock on them is because she's a mutant. Though she's not... So they've taken her out of the realm of the Inhumans, which is what she originally was. They made her into a djinn, which would explain, like, why she has, you know, Nor powers. But now we find out that she's actually a mutant, and that's why she can probably control her Nor powers better than other, you know, other beings can. Or other djinn. You know... So, I'm 100% okay with it. You know, I'm a stickler for sticking to the origin stories. Now, granted, I I am fine with there being some changes to fit the current storylines, mm-hmm. right? Um, but when you take her, we already... Everybody that started watching the show, the newer from the comics, knew that she was an inhuman. Mm-hmm. And we have Black Bolt and Doctor Strange, so we know Inhumans exist in another I, in another multiverse in, on in another on another world. I don't understand why it's like they're trying to erase Inhumans from this world from six one six. Well, they haven't because we <laughs> do know that they we we know that they exist because the Eternals are there, and the Eternals are there because of what was done to the Earth, like them seeing the Earth. And then, you know, the experiments that the Kree did, we already know that that's a true thing. Like, we know that all of those things exist. The problem so is... Why, so why make her a mutant instead of an inhuman? Because to make her an inhuman is going to have to create an entirely different, like, storyline that they've kind of avoided in the main MCU. They went into it with, you know, in the, the outside MCU. In the, the and that's a the bad universe. thing? It's not a bad thing, but they went into it in the other universe, but... They needed a way to introduce mutations. And <clears throat> this is kind of like she's a crossbreed. She is still uh, <clears throat> an inhuman in general, you, you but she's that. also partially partially a djinn. And now she's got a mutation, which makes her a mutant. You, you say that they needed a way to introduce the mutants. You know, after, after Endgame, lots of people came up with this idea of how mutants could have started. And it was very simple. It all had to do with the snap. But that's 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 a cosmic occurrence. Mutations. Yes. The mutation. So the, the snap, whole I, the hold whole, on. Okay, go ahead. When Hulk snapped, and remember his hand burned up. Right. Yeah. You could almost <clears throat> you could almost make the excuse that the reason that that happened was because of the gamma that was in his body, mm. and when that snap happened that released that gamma, causing mutations in people around the world, and thus mutants were created. But here's the problem with that. Or or it was activated in people already living. Here's the problem with that. And I, I that, that's that's like a theory that everybody has like well, I know certain people have come up with with this theory more than others, but um the gamma radiation that's set off by the cosmic stone, like the cosmic st- the the stones are already releasing gamma radiation as it is. That cosmic radiation is gamma radiation. It's that's why you have the the radiation that causes the Fantastic Four. Those are not mutations. Those are effects of being affected by that by by the gamma radiation. That's not a mutation. The whole point of a mutant is that they are the next evolutionary step of human beings. So for them to be like, oh, the blip gay made the mutants. No, that's not how that works. No, what it's, I'm, it's what supposed I'm to be. It, a it completely... was already there. It was already there, and it was dormant. And because of the snap, the gamma radiation actually activated that in some people. But that's but that's not how it works. Like the whole idea is that mutations are completely random, <clears throat> and they there's no way of curtailing how they affect a, a human body because evolution is is when you have obviously when you have things forces exerted upon a being eventually they will change to to survive in that environment in this case like the the human beings have all like 
multiple people all over the world in no in no in 100 randomly generated order have this mutation in their body that all of a sudden activates at, for no reason to force it into oh the gan the snap is what did it if that was the case then it would have activated when he, when thanos did it the first time because gamma radiation is what would have just to say anyway. it didn't it's it's they're, they're trying to force it into something that's not necessary. We already know what where where mutations come from. It's not, all right, all right. It's, it's all right. not a cosmic thing. And then, like you said, that would be changing something just to fit that narrative, and that's that's not what it is. Well, I just I just don't like I just don't like them. You know, basically just erasing the inhuman part when uh, it's very viable. You could have kept that there, especially when you introduce Black Bolt in Doctor Strange, and thus. Saying that he's in that universe puts to say he's not in this universe, and then reintroducing him later, What's and then to say in humans exist in this in in six one six. That's what I'm saying. You could you could start that path. What about Phase Five of Mar Marvel Phase Five? What, you tell could, me, you could what start to introduce humans, those stories. What in human story do you want to see introduced? I don't know enough about the Inhumans. Again, the only real story that you have is going to be the Inhumans. And they already know it's not going to work. So there's no reason to introduce something that's not going to work into the canon of the MCU and then try to force, again, you're going to try to force that narrative into the MCU when it's just not supported. It's much easier to just say, there's one character so far as an human that's been a positive addition to the MCU. And right now, that's her. Like, Black Bolt being in there, obviously, they, they ended him very quickly and very unceremoniously so that they didn't have to deal with the inhuman aspect of things. So now, with bringing her into as a mutation, and again, they just mentioned the word mutation, so we know that there are mutants in the world, but we still have other explanations as to who she is and what she is. Because they did show... You know that there are other there are other existences and other ways of, of you know gaining powers, um, and in the in the in the Marvel universe there are tons of ways of people gaining power. We already know that. So, to just plant that seed and then moving forward have that seed grow into other mutants in the MCU, I think is was the right way to do it. It was subtle. It was quick. It it, it excited everybody except for you apparently. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. Um, now that it's there, and now that that seed has been planted, now they can start doing all of the other things that they want to do. Um, but after that happens, uh, Kamala is just like, "All right, I'm tired. I'm done. I need to like go home and take a nap." And her mom's like, "Have you done your homework?" <laughs> like, oh my god, <laughs> this kid cannot catch a break. <laughs> and as she's laying there, uh, her 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 bracer starts just going crazy. It just starts lighting up and flashing. And she like stands up to try to figure out what's going on with it. And she gets sucked through her bedroom closet door, um, just like she did when she when it was stabbed and she went back into the past. Um, she just got like force pulled back into her closet. And when she stands up out of the closet, we get uh, Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel. In what looked like, I thought it was her Captain Marvel outfit at first, but you, you were like, I don't think that's it. That's that's literally that's her. That's uniform. not her uniform. And then I went back and looked at. It, I was like, Corey is correct. I hate to say it, but that is definitely her miss. Her future. Well, her, not her future. Her contemporary Miss Marvel outfit. Um, yeah, so, she had a. She, not only did she have a different suit on, but. She had a new haircut, as, yeah. as opposed to what we saw in... She uh, let her was, hair grow out. Shang-Chi. Yeah. She, so, uh, she, couldn't, she couldn't find a, uh, a hairstylist out in space uh, to give her that cut again. Man, so you uh, hate this chick with a passion. <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord. She was in this episode for 5.5 seconds, and you're like, stupid haircut. <laughs> Like, holy cow, dude! Your haterade is really tart today. <laughs> in all seriousness, we kind we kind of alluded to the fact that they needed to have her in this yep. in this episode, even being a final scene to explain why Kamala is in the Marvels movie coming out next year. Which, and sure I, enough, they did it. I think yeah, and I was actually surprised that they actually used her. I guess I shouldn't have been, but. Like we thought that they would use like Photon or somebody else, but not necessarily Miss Marvel, uh, Captain Marvel. Um, but they brought her in, and then like she's looking around the room, 
And because I was like, in, in the comic books, she transforms into Captain Marvel on a regular. That's how she kind of just, that was like her secret, that was like her, her secret identity. Like she would be Kamala Khan and then she would transform into uh, Captain Marvel and pretend to be Captain Marvel while she was saving people so that people wouldn't know who she was. And eventually she got out of that habit. But when it first happened, I was like, did she just turn into Captain Marvel? That was like my first thought right away. But then when she started looking around the room, she looked too surprised for it to have been Kamala, like, in disguise. Because her mm -hmm. powers, like, her, part of her powers is she shapeshifts. That's what her and Biggin is and everything. She just changes the shape and, and volume of her body. Um, so I was just like, maybe she just, you know, morphed. And then I was like, no. Because she doesn't know where she is. Like, she's really confused about what's going on. So, and then she runs out of the room um, after it's all said and done. So, and that that's it. That's the end. So, we don't know Here's where she question. is, what she's doing, but I feel like she just got swapped with Captain Marvel. My issue is, is when and where is she now? We'll find out in the Marvels. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And that normally would be a good spot for me to go, that's, you know, that's going to end it for us. But I do have a question first. Okay. We know from the comics that Rogue took... Uh, took Captain Marvel's powers mm -hmm. and killed her. Mm -hmm. Do we see an appearance, now that we know mutants exist, do we see Rogue in Marvel's Dude, I told who you, eventually kills Captain Marvel? I told you a year ago, we had had a conversation, if you remember, and I was like, if they're going to do what I think they're doing, which is introducing all of these characters into the MCU through these movies, meaning the kids and stuff like that, then they're probably going to introduce a mutant into each one of these movies moving forward. And I feel like since they kind of introduced a mutant in, in uh, uh, Multiverse of Madness, right? They introduced, uh, they introduced uh, Professor Xavier, right? So in the Marvel's movies, I definitely think that the main bad guy in that movie is going to end up being Rogue. I, I've, I said I've said I said that like a year ago. I was like, I believe that if they're gonna do it the way that it seems like they're doing it, they're gonna bring Rogue in as the main bad guy and she's gonna end up killing Captain Marvel, which or I don't think they'll actually have her kill her. I think they'll have her drain her powers and she'll end up being human again and she'll end up like marrying Rhodey and taking off with him or something. But um I do and seriously believe that she's going to come into it. She's gonna be the main bad guy in this movie. With that being said, could we see Miss her mother, Mystique? Uh, I don't think so. I think maybe not. In the, maybe not in Marvels, but in the next movie that she appears in. I see. My, I could see them doing it, but I don't see them going back to that well right now because then it's just everyone's gonna be like, everyone's gonna be thinking about Mystique from the X Men movies. You know what I mean? Like and obviously with Rogue being in it, they're gonna they could do the same thing. But I, Rogue was liked, Mystique was not as much liked. You know what I mean? So like for the the, the I think the dynamic of it because it's it's an origin story situation. I don't think they're gonna go that deep into Rogue's origin story like that at least because in that in that incarnation of Rogue when that happened, she had no idea that Mystique was her mother at that time. Like it yeah, eventually but, got yeah. it eventually came about, but. I think mm -hmm. that I think that they're going to concentrate if they do it, and if they do make her the main bad guy, like I pre like I predicted, then they're going to concentrate on when Rogue was basically a bad guy for most of that thing, and then she'll eventually get turned around more than likely by Kamala, and she'll talk her into being you know a better person, and then all of a sudden, and then she go to Professor Xavier's school for gifted children. Um, we'll see. <laughs> maybe they both do because you also have to think about what's the age group going to be because like rogue was a teenager in most of the x-men movies right so if they bring her in are they going to bring her in as like some rogue teenager that doesn't understand her powers and that gets into a scuffle you know she's a street rides teen with a mutant ability that she doesn't understand and then because of that she ends up tangling with the marvels and ends up you know having out with uh with captain marvel and you know, stealing her powers. So I don't know. Interested to see where it goes, but I am. I did make that. It was a while ago, but I know we have it on tape somewhere. But I definitely do believe that Rogue is going to be the one. Well, that, with Captain Marvel back on, with Captain Marvel back on Earth, it's possible that you know the movie starts out. She's wandering around Earth trying to figure it out. She runs into Rogue, who eventually steals her powers, 
now we fast forward or now we flash over to space where Kamala was transferred. They probably switch positions for whatever reason, which they'll figure it out. And they try and figure out where Captain Marvel is. They go back to Earth and find out Rogue stole their powers, and so they have to battle her that way. And then Kamala and Kamala ends up talking to her, and the two of them become friends. They end up going to Professor Xavier's school for gifted children to end the movie. And with that, we are going to end this video. We do want to thank you for watching. On behalf of Vic. That's me. I'm Corey. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time. See ya.